Hi, Brian. Uh, Brianna. Let me see. Yes, we are officially recording now. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the um, March 10th meeting of the Community Safety Working Group. And um, calling this meeting to order at 5.33 p.m. It appears we have a quorum, so I'll do a roll call attendance. Uh, if you please, uh, Ms. Pat? Here. Ms. Ferreira? Here. Mr. Vernon Jones? Here. Um, Ms. Owen? Here. Ms. Walker? Here. And Ms. Bowen? Here. Okay. There it is. Thank you. Have some others joining in at this moment. Okay. Hi, so why have you listed under Terry Mullen? Yeah, that's. Can you just tell me your name so I can, I and I would like to fix it. Uh, I'm sorry. Me? Yep. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terry Mullen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I just put my pronouns at the end. Sorry. I could delete those if that's necessary. No, that's good. Hello, everyone. Hi, Dr. Shabazz. Hi, Dr. Shabazz. Hi, Dr. Shabazz. How are you? I'm good. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice Hello. To be here. <laughs> Hello, Deborah. Glad you're here. Yeah, it, it feels like just community. So good to be amongst you yeah. all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hi, Terry. Hi there. So we're all in the room now. Thank you all for being here. I want to uh, move us forward. Um, and uh, just a quick uh, review of our agenda today. We're, um, as usual, we're going to open up to public comment very shortly after we review the, um, the February 10th um, minutes and, uh, and approve those minutes. We're going to public review. A public comment, I'm sorry. And then um, I, I think in the interest of the group, I'd like to ask our group if we could dispense with our uh, members report, given the, uh, the amount of work we have to do this evening. And if there is something that you maybe want to share at, at some point, probably incorporated in your comments during the course of our work this evening. Um, when we get to our action discussion items, we're going to be um, I'm going to have a consult a discussion with, with our consultants about the work coming up. And uh, we're going to be setting priorities for the next steps on what has to happen with our group. And then, as usual, we'll do upcoming events and uh, set our next meeting date, as usual. And at the end, if there are any topics that have not come before the chair uh, in a timely manner, we'll raise those at that point and then we'll move to adjourn. So given that, um, Ms. Moyston, um, I don't think you need to do this, but what I'd like to do is we've asked folks to read the minutes before, beforehand, we're not going to go through them on screen. And I'd like to welcome any uh, comments or corrections or edits to the minutes of, of the February 10th meeting. And I'd like to just open that up to the group, please. I think I see any hands. If there I are don't no see any hands. If there are no comments on the, um, the February 10th meeting notes, I would welcome a motion to accept those meeting notes as written. Motion to accept those minutes. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Second? Second that. Okay. All those in favor, the thumbs up. Okay. And Brianna, was that you that said second? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Again, just a thumbs up on the minutes, please. Thank you. Okay. 
I'd like to move very quickly to our public comment. Um, um, if there are members of the public viewing this evening who would like to uh, make a comment or share their thoughts with the committee, this is the time we do that. And I'd like to open that up and you will be recognized by uh, Ms. Moyston and welcome into the panel. Yes, good evening. So Mr. Vince O'Connor is here and he has his hand raised. Okay, he's Hi, Mr. O'Connor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good evening. Um, is it this is a appropriate time to make a comment? Absolutely. Okay. So um, again, since I don't have television, most of what I le learn about the world is from National Public Radio and associated things. And I did hear a program about the STAR program in Denver. Um, and I found it disturbing um, that less than what appeared to be less than 5% of the calls, the calls were being referred by the police department to non-armed uh, employees of the, of the city of Denver. And, um, and I think that, um, that that will lead to serious problems. Um, so I, I would really like to encourage the task force to the working group to um, to really take into consideration the idea that they recommend to the city council that um, that certain activities be certain calls be referred to a non-armed group and others be referred to the police and that um, because I think the issue of the mistrust of communities about what will happen if, the pol if you call the police can only be addressed if people know in advance that if you call somebody about a mental health issue, you will not see an armed police officer. You will, you will see somebody else. And that can only be guaranteed if there is a, an entirely new department headed by a civilian, which includes a police department, but also includes a, a group of individuals whose job it is to, um, to nonviolently resolve things. Um, so that, um, and, and I think the, the, other, the other issue, which I think is involved with the policing uh, issue in, across the country is Unless you have a new department, you cannot, when you have an entirely new department and the police department is laid down, you then get rid of all the agreements, the contracts and so forth, and you start anew with new people who have to apply for their jobs again. And as such, you then get to choose which, how to evaluate people, how to train them, and in fact, um, what disciplinary matters uh, are going to be uh, imposed for people who put their hands on their guns when they're talking to uh, civilians, uh, who, uh, who draw their weapons on individuals, um, who file face, uh, false police reports, all of which have proved incredibly difficult in, in uh, other police departments to get rid of and the way to get rid of the the existing disciplinary code is to have an entirely new department with new, with personnel under hired under new conditions and and say that this is this is how it's going to be we're not going to allow the wild west to continue anymore um so thank you very much and um I'd be happy to hear how the meeting goes. Thank you. Any other hands, um, Ms. Moyston? Couldn't hear you, Ms. Moyston, if you had a... 
It gets me each and every time. Um, no, okay. he was the only one. Thank you. Okay. Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I, I think we're going to, you know, move right directly to um, the work we have to, to do today. And it's the, the, our beginning discussions about working with our uh, consultant group. I want to also thank um, um, for welcoming uh, those folks to the panel. I want to thank Mr. Delaney and uh, Mr. Bachman also for joining us this evening as um, uh, they are part of the procurement process. I, I want to welcome, uh, you know, Dr. Shabazz, uh, Dr. Johnson Anderson, uh, uh, Mr. Terry Mullen, um, and let's see, are we missing anybody here? think that's it and also uh, our um dr katie ladowski and yeah oh yeah she just fell off the screen and came <laughs> back hi dr k hi. <laughs> i did see you finally and welcome to all of you and let me let me just start by in asking uh well first in a couple of things for the the public who may be watching right now we um have been in this process this bid process for a while we have uh, welcomed and accepted the bid uh, from uh, Seven Generations Movement Collective. We are very happy to be working with them. I'm looking forward to working with them um, for, the, for the duration of the contract. We are in the process of um, getting that uh, contract signed and up and running. And, um, you know, Mr. Delaney, um, I'm sure Mr. Bachman can fill us in on that as well as uh, members of the collective. And we're eager to begin and we have a very tight timeline. So we're going to be uh, discussing our priorities and looking at what we can do to, to move this process forward. Before um, I go any further with that, I wanna see First, before I welcome and introduce the, the, the folks uh, from the collective, if members of our uh, committee have any uh, opening statements they want to say as well. Well, for me, I, was just, I just wanna say welcome and we're eager to work with you all. And, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, but we're excited about it. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. And so let's let's get right to it. Um, uh, again, welcome and thank you for being here. It's exciting to see some new faces on this screen. You know, we're, I, we're used to seeing each other all the time, but now we have some uh, new collaborators with us and we're very happy to be in this position and very eager to go to going forward. Um, I wanna welcome each one of you and give you an opportunity just to introduce yourselves uh, to us. Uh, Certainly, we know some of us know each other, but to introduce yourselves to us, and then um, we'll begin our discussion. So I don't know who would like to go first. I'll go first, and and then um, they please <laughs> they can introduce themselves. Um, I just want to say, you know, the the work we have before us, um, we came together in part to. Um, do this type of work on behalf of communities uh, writ large that have, you know, want to see this as um, something that is ethical and socially just, but done in a way that includes the community voices. And that's at the heart of, of what we're trying to accomplish. So um, I'll say more later as we go into uh, talking about um, the contract. Um, I am uh, Dr. Demetria Shabazz. And um, as I said, I'm so glad that you all have uh, volunteered your time uh, to be on the Community Safety Working Group. I know as somebody who lives in this community, someone who has participated in the town in various capacities, what dedication uh, it entails and time, right? Uh, that, that it uh, entails. So thank you all for your service. Um, my background, 
by way of introduction, uh, is someone who has a background in social behavioral uh, research and work. My, my specialty is communication, um, but it is uh, in social and behavioral type of research methodologies, which are uh, mainly qualitative. Um, I, I definitely understand quantitative, but we have someone on our team that uh, does uh, that work as well. And so I want you, as you listen to the introductions, as, as folks introduce themselves, to understand this is a very capable uh, group of folks who are all working together with a certain uh, idea around social justice and what it means to do this research in the community. So Thank you, Dr. Shabazz, and, and welcome. Welcome, it's, it's good to see you. Uh, someone like to go next. Dr. Sanji. I was going to say, go ahead, Katie. <laughs> yeah, don't let me start calling on you now. Okay, That's, okay. No, I'll do, do it. it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. my name is uh, uh, Sanji Johnson Anderson, as you can see. Um, and you know, my I I'm an I like to introduce myself as an as an old teacher. Um, but my research interests uh, really sit at the intersection of black feminist epistemology, critical race theory and performance uh, ethnography. And I, my work focuses on the experience of students and families who are uh, primarily on students and families that are marginalized in public spaces. And um, I have a ton of experience working uh, with community groups doing grassroots community work, um, doing performance work. Um, and of course, as an educator, I value that. And it is what I think defines me beyond all else. And I uh, believe that when you are a teacher, you are a leader. When you are a teacher, you're good at everything because you have to be. I, um, I'm really um, excited about uh, making a contribution to this work, um, that we will value this work and that the work will accomplish uh, what we set out for it to accomplish, inclusive of the voices, especially the voices of our community members that we um, most often do not hear from. Um, so I will be giving it um, my best effort and I am a team player. I'm very nice, as you can see and uh, easy to work with. <laughs> and I really do look forward to getting to know um, all of us and to working together uh, to make something worthwhile uh, happen in our community. So thank you for welcoming me and I look forward to it. Thank you. We, we all welcome you as well, uh, Dr. Johnson Anderson and happy you're here. Good to see you again. Um, someone would like to go next. Happy to go. Thank you all. I'm, I can't wait to support this work, first off and foremost. And I, I was watching the 11 o'clock news uh, last night. And, um, you know, there was a clip about Watertown, Mass, of course, you know, doing very similar work. And I imagined any of your faces could have been those people speaking to their initiatives. So thank you for taking up this work and for committing to it. Um, you know, to be part of it is, is really an honor and to bring our expertise to it is um, exciting. So thank you. Um, I come from a background in education, both as a um, educator myself in seventh through 12th grade, as a teacher educator in both um, local and international settings. Um, and, you know, my, my research work is based also in, in qualitative, although sometimes mixed methods um, research. And um, I'm very excited about the fact that we will be drawing on participatory action research. Um, this is uh, uh, an approach that does prioritize and um, positions 
community members as the experts of their own environment and uh, of their own situations. So to be using this is very exciting. Um, I've been an advocate of this approach since early in my doctoral career, um, attending a workshop by kind of the, one of the founding mothers, if you will, of, of the PAR approach, um, Michelle Fine, as well as um, Dr. Um, Maria Torres as well. So to be, you know, starting then and probably over a decade ago at the City University of New York and now to see it being used in our, in our own um, town is, is phenomenal. So we have a lot of work to do and, um, and I am eager like all of you to get started. So thank you for this collaboration. And last but not least, Terry. Hi, I'm Terry Mullen. Um, I have a master's in applied mathematics with a focus on um, predictive modeling. Um, a lot of the work that I've done has been to show um, and to explain uh, how statistics is not the silver bullet people want it to be and how we really need to, what the, what the cons are of trying to use a purely quantitative approach um, and why we need researchers like Dr. Lazowski and Dr. Demetria Shabazz and Dr. Johnson Anderson, as well as researchers like myself uh, to be in collaboration with each other. Um, so I've done some work, I'm a programmer, I've done some work uh, for Defund 413. So if you've seen my name, that's probably where. Um, and yeah, that's me. Thank you also for all of your work. This committee is by far my favorite. I love watching y'all's y'all work. You are so amazing. We're we're our favorites too. We're we're, we're a little prejudiced in that way, but you know, you know how bias is. <laughs> so as you can see, we yeah. we have uh, just an amazing group. Mm -hmm. uh, we of course will talk more about the details. We'll be contracting out uh, with com uh, community ambassadors, that type of thing. But this is our core group for particularly this project. And um, you know, I, I think you have some of the the best folks mm -hmm. in in this community to to work on this important project. I also want to say that um, I'll, I'd like to be given time to talk a little bit about some of the, the things that questions we have with the contract, but then also uh, Dr. Lestowski um, will, for those of, of you who aren't familiar with PAR, uh, we'd like to kind of talk about um, our approach um, and how it fits in uh, to the, the participatory action research model and, and why we chose that model um, and how it was written up in our bid submission. Um, so that's what I've laid out uh, for us, I guess, for, for this evening. So perhaps we, we should we should go right to the you know the, the concrete pieces of this around the, you know the contractual issue. You know, this the, the contract is our beginning. And um, it, you know, it's laid out to de define the parameters and scope of the work. And so, um, you know, Mr. Delaney, you are here, Mr. Bockelman. Um, and I know, you know, at, at least I've been communicating around the status of where we are with that um, and, um, you know, what our next steps are. And then I think we can move right to some conversation, um, you know, with, with the group directly. If, if that works for the rest of the of the working group, so perhaps you can, um, you know, give us an update or any specifics we need to know as a, as a, a community safety working group. Sure. So, um, you know, we received the contract on March second, and we read it as a team. Uh, also that day, sent it to um, our attorney to to look over, and um, looking at how we responded to the three original bids, part A, B, and C. Um, and, you know, we looked at what we stated as the scope and uh, within the timeline of the contract. And we saw, you know, uh, a number of differences uh, which came up in how now part A, part B um, is configured. 
So we like to go over this in general and, and uh, by the, uh, the end of the week actually send you the, um, some of these questions and um, our suggested edits. But I think prior to doing that, we need to have a conversation on um, you know, priorities and, and the timeline as it's configured now. So again, we bid uh, on this to bring uh, our exper expertise of the team to bear on what we see as a ser serious matter regarding uh, community safety and policing um, and, and really in pursuit of social justice and equity uh, within our community. Um, and I say this because the points I want to bring up and um, you know, talk about as, as areas of negotiation um, have to do with delivering quality services, right? Uh, within this specific time frame. So we respect that the time frame is to utilize this analysis to drive policy and budget um, discussions. So we, we understand it's time sensitive work um, we respect that you also see the budgeting process as a statement, a, a, a real statement about the values of this community. So this being March 10th, we are effectively talking about six weeks, um, provided that we can get started on this immediately. So brings up the first point of concern that in order to put people together, particularly to uh, recruit, train um, the uh, contractual community ambassadors as they're defined uh, and get started on this work and leading to the, the, the preliminary report, we, uh, we want to streamline the, the pay schedule and really look at it uh, within thirds because we're going to have to uh, pay our contractual folk um, to, you know, to train. You know, we don't want them to spend their time and not compensate them in some way. And so we'll need um, one third uh, almost immediately to get this uh, work started. Um, and also, you know, when we talk about um, to, to formulate the necessary focus groups, the research, the work, which becomes a part of our analysis to turn in a report, um, we see it as within the next three weeks, another third, and then the final, um, the final report, we could receive the, the final third. Okay, so and in, in, you know, perhaps particularly with the part B, some of that report might even happen before um, the, the timelines that you all have set up. But that brings up another issue. And again, these are generalities and I'll put it in a document, a written document to uh, forward to you all. But those dates are also not streamlined, meaning they're not consistent. So just like with the pay schedule, part A and B have differences. The uh, timelines for part A and B are different. And since we are uh, contracted to do both of those and we are one entity, it would be great to have all of that consistent. Okay, so, you know, the, the pay schedule consistent and the timeline consistent. It would just be a lot clearer. And so at this juncture, um, that brings up this point and something for you all to consider as a group that I think we could help as researchers uh, help you all prioritize. Prioritize in terms of what's the research um, that's really important and pertinent to um, creating a report that will be useful, right, in shaping budgetary concerns. All right, so the research and data collection 
there's a lot <laughs> that you all have laid out within part A and B, and even more so because it looks like some of the stuff is repeated from part C and put some dispersed within part A and B. And mm -hmm. so it becomes even larger, right? And I think with the time that we have, it would be important if we could have a conversation either all as a group or with one of us and uh, your committee to begin to be, be real specific in terms of priorities. D, we see you all doing, you know, these five or six main things because this is what's going to drive uh, the data that will be needed to write the report. And I think we could figure that out now that you have, and again, it doesn't mean that you, you all did a great job and, and are doing a great job, but now you have at your disposable, your disposable, your disposal um, for researchers, right? That can, uh, that have experience doing community engaged work, doing participatory action research work out uh, within communities that we could perhaps help to shape what are the what are the prioritized items that um, need to be done now, as opposed to something that could that could be done later? Either you know contract it with us or contract it you know with someone else. However you want to do it, but right now within this timeline, these are the priorities. Okay, so and again that would assist in shaping that report because we would be able to focus on those things get those things done, get the report into you in a draft mode, have you look at it, um, and then have that final report and the presentation, okay? So that's, that's one thing. And then as far as like some specifics, um, our group, you know, we were awarded the two contracts, part A and B, um, we like the, you know, the, the payment schedule streamlined. We like some of the, the dates uh, streamlined so we could begin uh, this work to hire the, compute, uh, uh, the community ambassadors. Um, there's items such as um, some language, such as um, on page three of the contract where it reads, and, and this is just in general. I just want to give you an example because, again, we're going to be more specific in writing. Um, it, it reads if requested by the CSWG. I think as we lay out priorities, it would be really important that, yes, we can make way for contingencies, right? But it would be more important to be real specific. This is what we, we want you to do and to stick to that as opposed to, oh, we just thought of something else. And again, that doesn't mean you, you will, but it, it reads like that within the contract. Uh, we just thought of something else and we want you to do this now within this timeline, okay? Because time, of course, is of the essence. Um, and it seems that having this report is a major part of it um, and getting those experiences from the community, putting that into both qualitative data and quantitative data, that's gonna take time. And it's not necessarily, I mean, the writing takes time, the analysis takes time, but what takes time is recruiting those folks, going out into the community because you have to, to build that trust, doing that research, and then bringing it back in order to, to have that analysis take place. So I just want us to think about that. Katie's gonna talk a little bit about that in terms of, of PAR, of course. And then, Lastly, um, who do we speak to <laughs> regarding uh, items that may come up, eventualities that might occur during the process of the research? Um, you know, maybe there's, um, I just spoke with actually uh, just trying to plan out um, through Craig's doors, for instance, you know, if we, if that becomes a priority, and I, again, I don't know, we have to look at that because we had laid out the BIPOC community as the main groups in which we would look at five of them, you have 10, uh, which again, if, we, if we're gonna prioritize, can we prioritize five 
you know, groups and focus on them. And then we can reach out later uh, to other groups because again, time is, is of the essence. But, you know, there might be contingencies in, in terms of we had planned to, uh, within our proposal, provide gift cards uh, from restaurants, you know, it would support businesses within the town, that type of thing, as incentives for participants. Well, just in talking, you know, having that conversation with uh, Kevin Noonan, you know, he, he suggested, well, not necessarily restaurants, but a gift card to CVS or Target. Um, you know, would be more useful to our folks if, if that's a possibility. So things like that might be a contingency. Uh, I don't know, but we would want to know who to contact um, for those types of things. Um, there, like I said, there are more specifics. I don't know if this is the time or place to get into every uh, specificity within, within the document. Um, but we will have it to you uh, by the end of the week. And um, we'll, you know, we'll be starting the work, but we'll have it to you by the end of the week. And then you all could look it over and hopefully have a signed document by Monday. Any Thank questions? You, or Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, that, that was me on mute, I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you, that, that's um, really helpful to hear. Let me just go back to the top of what you, you said um, and uh, even all of you in, the, in your communication, in your introduction about wanting, wanting to you know, put the community up front as experts in this and getting the kind of feedback that's gonna help in, inform our, our recommendations as, as a community safety working group to the town. Um, that I think we join you in with no, no reservations. We certainly want that. We've attempted to do uh, that already with a couple of forums that we've had. And, um, you know, we've done it through looking at the, you know, people coming in on our survey link, um, getting information from them. And we've received information from people just in general. They will write to us and tell us about their experiences, et cetera. So we, we join you in that piece. I think as a community safety working group, um, you know, just looking at this now, just hearing this for the first time, we, um, you know, we're running running the, your your comments, Doctor Doctor Shabazz, against what we know that's in the contract as it was written. So you know, there there are some you're you're requesting some modifications. You're requesting some different trajectory for the work going on. So I, in terms of the specifics about all of that, I don't need necessarily to know if we get to all of that um, in, in this moment, but certainly I wanna see, you know, how that, you know, sits with uh, you, you know, Mr. Delaney, Mr. Um, Mr. Bockelman, uh, you know, quality work makes sense to all of us certainly. And I think all of us are sensitive to timeframes that we're working on and we wanna get this work uh, done and done well, but we want to do, have it done in the most efficient manner we can. So um, I don't know, and uh, then I'll come back to you, Dr. Shabazz, and, and certainly members of, of your group, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lazdowski. Uh, I want to just hear from, from you, Mr. Delaney or Mr. Bachman, to see where, where you stand in listening to some of these comments as well. Uh, so I think uh, the best way would probably be to to wait for uh, until we have all of the feedback, suggested changes and questions from seven generations at once. Um, I think having a, an idea of the, the full scope of what you're, what you're, you would, you're, you're questioning or would like adjusted is probably the way to go. And I also think doing it, I, we, we don't typically do these kind of contract minutia in a committee meeting. It's kind of messy. So I think having that just be done with town staff uh, when it's all ready is probably the way to go. Uh, generally, so uh, altering the specific payment schedule, the milestones, uh, that is uh, definitely something that can be up for negotiation. The timeline is tougher. Uh, 
uh, a lot of those milestones were in the original bid document and you and the other bidders bid constructed your bid based on that. So you know, some of the additional milestones we put into the contract weren't in the, might not have been in the IFB. I'll, I'll say might not have, and those could be theoretically up for negotiation, but a lot of the, the final reporting and, and stuff like that, that's, that's in there. So I, I will definitely want to see what, what they all are. Um, you, uh, you brought up a number of points and I'm probably missing some, but I'll, so I'll stop talking here, but if there's more. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bachman. Yeah, I, I think uh, Dr. Shabazz raises a lot of really key points that are really important and that we it's, it's important to iron out, have a good understanding for a good working relationship. Um, you know, the, I think, you know, and some of these do will rest with the community safety working group. So I think it's important to, if we can resolve them tonight, that would be expedite this. So the, if requested line, I mean, I think it serves, you know, the consultant will need to know if you're requesting it or not, because they need to build that into their work plan. And if I can dig up with that. So it says, if I get the right one, Dr. Shabazz, it says, um, if requested by the community safety working group, the contractor will facilitate communication and dialogue between the community safety working group and the Amherst Police Department to help shape community safety working group's recommendations. So, and I, so, I, and you may you may not have an answer tonight on that, but the, that's a decision point for the community safety working group. And I think it's something they would want to build into their work plan if you're going to say yes, we want that or not. So that, that's one point. I think Dr. Shabazz's idea of having a point person to be able to run things back and forth is really important. Uh, time is of the essence. It, I think while you may want them to come and report in every Wednesday, they might have an answer. They might have a question for you that needs an answer that day. Mm -hmm. And so I think having the community safety working group designate a person who can field those questions. Um, I think it really should be someone from the community safety working group, not a town staff person. I mean, you could work it through Ms. Moyston, of course. Um, yeah, I, I agree with, with um, Anthony on the um, the dates. The dates are what we put out in the bid, and that's how everyone bid. And we can't really change those dates. The payment schedule we can. That's those. Um, what we tried to do is tie those payment schedules to products. Um, I understand the sensitivity about um, getting money. We can't pay in advance, so the town's not permitted to pay someone in advance of the work performed. Um, but we can move that payment schedule sooner in the month of, of March, if that would if that would help. We can we only work on a reimbursement basis for everybody. So as you do the work, we can make those payments quicker and more frequent if that's if that's helpful. The question I had and I have is, how will I know when to sign that uh, procurement the, that authorization? So I need I'm, I want it to be really abundantly clear with everybody you know, with the contractor so that there's as little ambiguity as possible. So there's no discretion that this task was done, the payment gets made. And so we just move it forward. And so trying to tie it to product is how the contract is, is assembled. Um, if there's some other way to do it, I'm open to that. But I think, you know, if, if, there's, if there's a report required, the report gets turned in, payment gets, gets pushed out. And I think that that's, you know, as I, I understand why you would want seed money to get started with folks, but we're not allowed to do that. Um, those are the major points, but I think those are, um, there's two questions for the, for the, and you don't, I don't think the point, point person is necessary tonight, but I think it's important to have a person like that. Um, and then the discretionary, the one discretionary item in the contract was, do you want them to fulfill that function or not? And that would be wise for you to decide that. Um, and then I think, you know, as Anthony said, we can work out the payment schedule, um, it, but it just has to be, I, I just want to be tied tied to, to work performed or whatever it is that has, that has to happen. Sure. And just so you're aware, it takes a little bit of time mm -hmm. for the town to process. So, I mean, we will, I'm not sure how long it takes Anthony. No, I'm very much aware how long it takes. The okay. Town. So no, and I appreciate that Mr. Bockelman, um, it, it, going back to that line, uh, if requested, I mean, it has to do with the, the uh, priority. So if the mm -hmm. priority is for us to facilitate discussions with the APD, I think 
that that becomes um, a whole <laughs> a whole use of time mm -hmm. and skills that could be used to gather data from the community to aid in the report. So um, I think those are two different areas. Certainly we have the skill base to do it, um, mm -hmm. but I, I think just for us to really assess that, is that something that could later happen based on the research findings, based on the data, based on the experiences that people have had to shape future trainings and discussions with the APD and the CSWG. I mean, um, you know, I, I see your role in this community as uh, important, you know, uh, this is the first time to my knowledge that you have folks uh, civically uh, engaged and uh, civic leaders, right, in the role of, of leadership, uh, speaking on behalf of the community that is representative of uh, people of color to this, to this level and capacity. So um, I, all I'm saying is that this might be that facilitation uh, could be informed by the data by the research and if you have six weeks in which to have uh, a report that is useful right to uh, budgetary uh, requests that might be something to put for later so that you know it's up up to you all most certainly but um I, I guess, you know, I, I think it's something that that should be considered, particularly since it's also representative within the contract uh, uh, as if requested. So it seemed that not necessarily, but we may request it. It was also part of, I think it's duplicated, it was in part B and then it appeared also in part C. So it's like there's a duplication that we saw in, in both of those uh, parts of the original bid that we bid on. So, so, so thank you, Mr. Delaney and, and, and Dr. Shabazz as well. I, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. And last, go right ahead. Go right to, ahead. to speak to what Mr. Bockelman was talking about in terms of uh, pay schedule being tied to performance. Uh, what I foresee is coming here at, at another juncture within a week or so, basically to report on this is our recruitment. This is our uh, hiring of folks, uh, ambassadors, and this is the training, and this is what we're doing, and report out on our progress. And so, you know, it could be tied to that because certainly we'll have to do a 1099 for all these contractual workers, yeah. um, and therefore we can't. We'll have to make those requests, uh, sending into the town, in order to then uh, get reimbursed for payments to them. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you both. And I, I did thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Lazowski, for, for being patient there. <laughs> Waiting. I, I think you had a couple things. And I do want to, if I may, I'd like to, um, uh, before you um, before you speak, sort of check in with our group, too, because to see if they have any questions at this point. Um, we, we have done a considerable body of work already, which may feed into some of the things that you may be talking about or may need to know from us. So I wanna check in with them because also we, we need to, we have some responses I'm sure to what you're saying already. So I don't wanna you know, be the only one speaking on, on the screen right now. So if I may, um, um, uh, if I could just quickly go to Mr. Vernon Jones, uh, Dr. Lodowski and then we'll come back to you. Well, I wonder if we could do a quick review of the dates and what we are up against. Uh, I felt like I heard Dr. Shabazz talking about having six weeks and there's a piece of it that, as I understand it, we don't have six weeks. Um, and while the timelines are different on part A and B in the, in the bid and the contract, um, I, while we can't put everything at the, at the end, you know, at the, my guess is that we could actually rearrange some things, that there are some things that we really have to have 
by the time the town manager needs our budget recommendations. And there are other things that may be in that part of the contract that could be that you could have some more time on. And I'd be, I would hope we could we could do some of that. But Mr. Bachman, would you be willing to review to review again when you need to get the final report from our working group relative to budget uh, and whether that also needs to include the community responder model at that time and then what the date is for the second uh, report from us because we'll need things from the consultants a little before they're due to to you so yes yeah, so i, I have to uh, thank you mr wiley um so i need to submit my budget i require to submit my budget by may 1st to the town council uh, we want this to be part of that budget. So I think we extended the timeline a little bit from what we originally started. I, I think, you know, again, I'm present. I'm hearing all everything that you're thinking about. I've seen the work that you did, uh, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. So I'm sort of understanding. I want to stay in tr on top of it so that when it comes time to um, put together the budget, there's not a lot of ramp up time for me. So I want to stay on top of it. So I think mid, I think we said mid April, um, um, like a, um, I'd have to look at the actual dates by mid April. And we're, we're really in the, we're just pretty much finish, finishing the budget by mid April. So basically a month from now um, to get things And the final report. Does, I, I just need the sort of the, the shell of the recommendations, the final report with all the stuff that has to be done that can come by April 30th. So that's not as, you know, that's, that's something that I know that takes a lot of time for a consultant to pull together the final product. Um, but in terms of the concept and where, what you're thinking, um, basically a month from now. Okay. Did you have a, a follow up Mr. Vernon Jones to that or does that answer your question? Uh, only to, I'm not sure how we go about, yeah. you know, sort of s sorting out exactly what we need from the consultants prior to uh, our submitting something to the town manager by April 10, and what are the things that could wait till the 30th. Uh, maybe that's a, something a few of us could work on with, you know, a member of the town staff and the someone from the consulting group. I'm, I'm not sure how to proceed there, but I, I'm interested in giving the consultants all the time they can have for the parts that can, um, that we can wait on uh, and being very clear about what it is that we, we can't wait on. So, um, Ms. Ferreira, I, I did say I was going to go back to Dr. Dostowski, but if, is this is a, if this is related to what we we're just talking about? Yeah, okay. I mean, I think- Yeah, go ahead, then, also, then I'm still going straight to you, Dr. Yeah, Herself. because I thought you also said you wanted like us to kind of chime in and- Yeah, I wanted to- after, after, Yeah, because there's Herself. been a lot of conversation going back yeah. and forth. So I want to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, when things are fresh on my mind too, it comes Absolutely. up. It kind of goes along with what Mr. Vernon Jones has been talking about, because I know we had met last week and had discussed, you know, a variety of different things. Um, and from what I recall is that, yes, we need to, to make sure, and that's, and that's in there in terms of the timeline, right? That we need to have that final plan by April 2nd, because we do need to give something to uh, Mr. Bachman by April 9th. That was what we had um, discussed previously. So for me, I think as you've already uh, noted, Mr. Wiley, we, we've already done quite a bit of work that I think that the consultants could utilize and work with, you know, coming off the gate, right? So we have surveys, we have two public forums that were recorded. Uh, we have, you know, also APD data that we've gotten already, you know, ahead of time. Um, and we have, you know, like, yeah, like the surveys and stuff like that are very important that we haven't even really looked at, you know, and those need to kind of all be collected and digested. Um, that can all go into, and we've also already been looking at some of the alternative uh, programs and things like that, that we could discuss with the consultants. So I think they could meet that, that um, deadline with that final plan of April 2nd, just, um, you know, based on those. While, you know, also I'm assuming, right, because there's, there's several people working in, in your consulting group, 
that the participatory action uh, research can all be taking place and that can be part of the final plan that's by by April 30th, right? All the other work with getting the community and the ambassador, because we still have the second part of our charge where we're really looking at the police and, and really looking at how to reform. And, and, you know, and I know we're gonna need a lot of that information from the community in terms of what recommendations are gonna go into that. So for me, that's the way I'm kind of, you know, gauging it, there's a, a big body I think you froze a bit there. You did. I don't think we. I don't think we heard the last sentence, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Right. Mr. I'll Herrera. Just... We heard you froze a bit. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just say that. No, I'm saying there's a, a body of work uh, available that you know we can that that the consultants can utilize and start. Work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lazowski. Thank you. Um... I might have an additional comment now that I heard that. I just, I wanna I thank everyone for focusing on, on the timeline. And I, I as um, Dr. Shabazz said earlier, it is the reports that will inform the policy and the budget. So I, I wanna respect that timeline to the last possible date as possible. I know we are already delayed though in this work as well. And I know, you know, looking back to the original bid and like the idea was that we would be meeting February 24th or 5th or something. So we're already two weeks behind. And my goal again, as an ethical researcher is to um, prioritize the process of the research. And when you're dealing with qualitative, you know, data collection and analysis, you're dealing with human lives. And in particular with participatory action research, it does come down to trust and building those relationships. Otherwise we could throw surveys at everyone, but I, I don't think that's <clears throat> really what you want. Um, so I appreciate, you know, this discussion to get a better feel of like when that last possible date is. Um, I am, however, a little nervous to hear that there's more data, which is exciting, but it also, if that's something you want us to do, then then we got to figure out what the contract says, because to my knowledge, that was not part of it. And if it, if there's more to analyze and, and more data sets to review, again, that's going to, um, you know, impact our timeline and our, because um, again, we can't, we come into this thinking, you know, our approach is participatory action research. I can tell you that report has already started, right? I'm already thinking through methodology, you know, justifying why this, why PAR makes sense, et cetera. It's really the work with our participants that creates the findings, which will then inform, um, which will inform the recommendations. And that portion, unfortunately, can't be rushed, but we will start our recruitment and, and training, although I hate that term because Professor once told me we train cats and dogs, not people. Um, so yeah, we will, you know, start our collaboration with community amb ambassadors and, and get that started. So thank you for being open to maybe some flexibility in the, in the timeline. Yeah, thank you for that information. I'm going to um, just open this up now to um, our, our entire panel, uh, our group, your consultant group, to see what other comments um, folks would like to forward at this time. And um, just real quick about data. Um, yes, we are aware, um, at least I, I was, I know it's not, it, it's kind of vaguely included or <laughs> it's not really specific in the contract that you want us to incorporate the, the data sets that you've already produced. I think uh, and we'll have a conversation as a team, um, how that could be useful for part B, perhaps, uh, in that you have uh, survey data, you have the two forums, and as Mr. Vince O'Connor, um, uh, you know, uh, offered during public comment, you have public comments that have been recorded over the course of this group meeting. That's all data. That's qualitative data that can be assessed. We'll need all of those recordings. Um, and again, I would ask to produce because to go through qualitative data like that uh, and produce a report, it's still, it still, it takes some time even though it's, it's there. 
And this is definitely, you know, within our, our bailiwick to take that information, take that qualitative uh, uh, data, put it into some type of uh, quantitative, uh, you know, uh, way for, for it to be digestible and understood and, and utilized. One of the things in terms of data and, and policing, we also have some data from uh, uh, Defund and the League, but they didn't, they weren't totally forthcoming <laughs> with all of their data. And so um, I'm sure Terry and I will talk about this, um, but there is some of the, the policing uh, data that we weren't able to get access to. Um, so that might be something that we'll have to discuss, particularly if, if you all believe it to be useful to this process, okay? Um, so there is, there is information out there, most definitely. And uh, we would ask uh, to have access to all of that in order to put in, <coughs> excuse me, to put into part B, which also includes, mind you, and just to remind you, because again, it's about prioritizing, um, offering, um, making, researching other communities and programs, and then making suggestions for alternatives. So it's kind of this two-part uh, report. So I just want to be mindful of that's all within the scope to be delivered by April 2nd. Right. Um, I, I have a, a couple of comments, but I'm going to defer to the, 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 the group uh, since I've spoken already a couple of times. Um, any members of the group have a question or a comment or an offering at this point? I, I can't see um, the, I have to look and see if I can see those hands from people off screen here. Hang on a second. Ms. Walker. Um, I think if it's an option that we should absolutely have people go through the bid um, and either uh, like revise or prioritize the items, I think that would just be helpful for all of us to be on the same page and then it would be helpful for us because then we'll have more clear expectations of what exactly it is they're doing um and and then also just to be mindful of the timeline like what absolutely do we need in order to make the report on the second and have those things also be clear for the consulting group so that they aren't so that they can prioritize their work mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. And, and I think this kind of feeds back into what Mr. Delaney said earlier about getting all of this, you know, uh, on the plate at one time so that we're, we're not piecemealing the input coming in. We all understand what the, what the parameters are. Um, and I, I believe you, you said, um, Dr. Shabazz, that, that by the end of the week, that could happen, you know, if we do it in, in, the, in the proper way, certainly. Um, get the questions answers and get all those things on the, on the page. I, I do want to say very quickly that um, uh, we have been thinking already as a group. We haven't had a full uh, opportunity to discuss, but we have been thinking already about some, you know, preliminary kind of straw poll kind of things we were thinking about in terms of what might be recommendations down the line. And I, I don't want to go too far into that because we haven't had our full discussion on it, but we, we had some discussion, we had some frameworks about trying to say, hey, what do we know already and what's kind of obvious and in our face that, that we, we, we need to, to think about. So we have some of that going on already. Um, we have been sharing resources, doing some of our own research a, a bit, sharing you know the what's going on in different districts and, and uh, in towns and cities, uh, uh, just recently shared the the, um, the the park document. There's one park document about about community policing, for example. So I, I think we're not in terms of all of us reading and gathering stuff. It, it that's a, that's a good thing. There's a lot of information going on there, but how to how to draw it down to what's essential is where we need to be, and we need to do it very quickly uh, because we're on such a tight time frame. What I'm hearing is that um, we all want to give you certainly the time to do quality work. 
um, that there's a piece of this about hiring uh, folks to to work with and get out into the community um, and and get this feedback, have these conversations, and come back. Um, what's your sense of how? This might be an unfair question. If it is, you'll certainly tell me. But how how many folks might you need, and what what kind of time frame are we talking about in terms of? recruiting, hiring, you know, vetting folks who are going to be working on behalf of the group to then go out and in some kind of fr framework to do what what is that going to take for you in, in your in your mind's eye? So this might be a good time to segue to Dr. Litzowski um, to give you a sense of what PAR, an overview of our approach with PAR and then we can talk about how many, I mean, in our proposal, we certainly uh, had specified five. So yeah. why don't we let Katie, um, Katie, you have some slides. It's, it's not very long, but I think it'll give you a sense of uh, where we're coming from in, in terms of recruitment and um, uh, engagement with the community. Thank you for sharing. Um, permission, <laughs> all queued up. So I'm going to start um, apart from my um, slideshow mode because I'm going to be taking notes on one of the slides. So I'll start in this mode and then I'll move into um, the actual slideshow. But very briefly, I only have a few, you know, 10 slides prepared here. Um, to share with you a bit about participatory action research for those of you who are less familiar with it although I think a lot of you are familiar with it. So um, in general, what we're hoping to do is give you uh, an introduction to participatory research, participatory action research, highlight the benefits of this approach for assisting all of you in meeting your objectives to examine people's experiences with public safety services, and also identify the underlying values of PAR and how it informs our work, right? So this goes back, I think, to the question of how do we recruit and what numbers are we working with, et cetera. Um, I'm gonna start with a brief activity. I'd love for you just to shout out answers as I scribe. Um, what do you think of when you think of a traditional researcher? Are there images that, that come to mind? And fe again, feel free just to shout out your thoughts. Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower, thank you. What have you seen? How are researchers depicted in the media or films or textbooks? Yeah, more so like what Mr. Vernon Jones said, like kind of, um, you know, just researching in the libraries or doing things and not really engaging with people. Thank you. What else? Keep them coming. I see them as more re recorders and reporters rather than deep thinkers. Other other thoughts? This is a good a good list, right? And this is an activity that um, can be done in a setting when you're actually working with, um, in, in our case, perhaps the ambassadors, right? Starting off with what is your image of a researcher? Because this is all about participatory action research is very much about positionality and positioning community members as the experts. So I'm gonna to go to my slide. So a lot of times when you, if you were to do a Google search as I did, a researcher yields the following images, right? A lot of lab coats, computers, again, that kind of sterile environment of an office or a library, um, you know, a lot of science perhaps, not really working with people per se. 
So we shift the lens in participatory action research. And here's a few, here's a few uh, fundamentals. First of all, get rid of the lab coats, right? We don't have to wear anything specific. <laughs> in part, the people with lived experience are viewed as the experts and they conduct the research. They design the research, they um, collect the data, they analyze the data. In the case of your inquiry, the working group's inquiry, those who experience community safety services through policing and otherwise firsthand are the experts. And we have focused our lens, as you saw in our proposal, to um, BIPOC communities because they are frequently the ones who experience um, policing. So it is community members who are the experts. They are the ones who know which questions to ask and how to find the appropriate answers. They design, they collaborate to determine the design of the research methods, to collect the data, analyze it, and also present the findings. And it's that action, right, in participatory action research, which is intended to inform policy, and in, in our case as well, you know, the, the town budget. So just a little trivia, did you know that um, PAR is a highly valued approach to inquiry in other town sectors? And um, my work earlier, a few number of years ago in working with the school committee, um, the regional school committee voted to approve a policy which actually prioritizes the use of participatory action research. And you can find it on their webpage, but it took about a year to get it passed, but it's exciting that the, the school district also upholds this as a, a valuable means of, of data collection. So to see the town using it for this endeavor is very exciting. So just to kind of paint this picture a little bit more clearly, there's thousands of studies that use participatory action research as its approach, um, you know, from sectors in healthcare, education, I've hi I highlight one here from a number of years ago where um, residents in the South Bronx designed um, a, a study to examine the stop and frisk rates, right? Because they were noticing that this is something that's, you know, their policing was beyond um, perhaps necessary. They found, you know, some data and then they made a public presentation one evening and um, you know, made community members aware of the fact that the stop and risk, risk rates were um, much higher, and I, I don't have the stats, but so much higher than um, what actually takes place in um, the neighborhood of New York University, NYU. Um, and they found that when people in the South Bronx were stopped and frisked, there were very little offenses, you know, 90% of, of resulted in, you know, no issues. Whereas in um, the other neighborhood of NYU, you know, when people were actually stopped, there were more offenses found. So they're, you know, obviously the disproportionate number, but that just shows you how participatory action research can, you know, identify an issue. It's designed by the stakeholders who are, you know, living the issue, so to speak. And um, it serves to change practice, which is what they did. So how does PAR assist um, the working group in meeting its objectives? Again, the use of PAR ensures a sy systematic yet flexible approach to research. And maintaining this balance, which is which is why I kind of brought up the timeline, um, it's essential in order to engage, you know, the communities most impacted by policing, because human lives are involved, and there's, you know, trust that needs to be built. Um, we're often at the mercy of getting, you know, to a particular point with community members, and you know, in our case, ambassadors, um, before we can get into the thick of it if you will. And it went before people are willing to open up um, and explain their, their situation. So our next steps are to recruit um, 
our ambassadors, um, BIPOC and BIPOC youth in particular. Um, and we are hoping to do this with the help of maybe using the um, town hall website for the community working group um, to essentially create a statement of interest, post that statement of interest, have people complete it and um, you know, apply to be ambassadors. I think from that pool, we'll also be able to um, have additional people who will serve as um, the ambassadors group members, if you will, right? So our goal is to start with five, um, train the ambassadors, and then they will then also work with additional numbers of people to, you know, get even more reach. Um, so yeah, so the goal will be to train them in research design, qualitative data collection methods, again, making them aware of what is even possible, right? I know often we talk about focus groups, interviews or such, but there's a whole range of, of different methods that can be used for data collection. And then also, ideally, those participants, those ambassadors also take part in um, the data analysis. Um, you know, it wouldn't make sense for myself as someone with, as a white woman who has one experience with policing to be looking at this data alone, right? So it's incorporating those community participants in um, the data analysis and, and um, dissemination of the findings as well. So I will stop sharing, but happy to take um, questions. Thank you for your attention. Any any uh, questions or comments from the, the working group? Crash course. Ms. Ferreira. I'm just gonna like, cause I'm having internet issues, but. shine some light on. And I think Ms. Moisen, maybe you could kind of uh, talk more about it is that I guess we already have certain folks that are ambassadors um, in the community. Ms. Ferrer, I mean, Ms. Ms. Moisten. I know I just, she was fading out. So I didn't know yeah, if she, she did, had, yeah. was done um, speaking. So we don't currently have ambassadors. There are individuals that were asked to in the future be ambassadors from different oh, okay. locations all over town. And so um, those people were or and or are available to step in. And so they cross range a couple of different cultures and um, you know, bilingual and language. Mr. Bachelman. Yeah, I just want to clarify the terminology. So the town has an ambassador program that is for the COVID-19 response, and that's something different. So I think uh, Ms. Moisa is talking about another group of people that would be more um, purposefully driven for this project. Thanks. So Ms. Ms. Moisa, yeah. Ms. Moisa. Uh, I was like, Ms. Moisten and then and Ms. Ferreira, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, I kind of undersold that. So these are people who are already established leaders in their particular community area that already have well-developed relationships with other residents in their community. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira, thank you. That was my point, that's what I thought it was, yeah. that they were actually, you know, people that were kind of leaders in the community. That's why I was saying in terms of possibly utilizing them and not starting from ground. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, there, oh, there you are, my screen changed. I lost track of you there for uh, Dr. Lazowski. Um, if, you were to, if you were to have the five ambassadors candidates that in front of you right now and you're ready to go, uh, how, what's the time frame around a training module for those folks and how soon would they be um, able to go out and begin the work of course, you also have to define where the work is going to take place, certainly, but and how it's going to take place. But what's the what's the training timeline? And I guess I'm thinking about this in terms of our calendar issues, um, because this is a very important piece of us connecting with the community. It's one of the um, uh, the, the the pieces of our charge 
to make sure that happens in order to come up with some, you know, viable and you know actionable recommendations. So, just in answer to that question, what, what's your what's your take based on your experience? How long does that turnaround take place for them to be up and ready to go? <laughs> so my time frame is highly influenced by your timeline. <laughs> I think I would design it differently, but I'm also respectful of your timeline. Mm -hmm. um, so I I would say. I think we would be ready to post something to the town website, for example, as, as one means or um, by Friday, you know, like a statement of interest type type thing um, that people would be asked to complete most likely, you know, within a few days, a week's time. Um, you know, I do want to, I'm hearing like in terms of there already being potential people, but also want to open it up for the sake of seeing who else comes forward, right? Because one, the goal is to select ambassadors, five people, but then for each ambassador, we're also hoping that they work with a group of people, right? So the more the merrier in this sense, and it's gonna yield the data and the stories that we want to hear. Um, but I would say if we can begin, you know, working with the ambassadors, the I would suggest we would complete that by I mean, if we can identify people and then depending on what their schedule is, we could complete that by the 21st, um, but they also have to recruit or, you know, we have to find people who are, they are gonna do their outreach to, right? And so this is where the time is critical because it's not just about training them, but again, it's about building rapport. You can't just sit down and open your heart about you know what happened at one time about a sensitive topic such as policing um but you know as we mapped out and perhaps my my fellow colleagues can um share that timeline you know we anticipated a few hours workshop you know with the ambassadors and then on top of that they go out and do their outreach and um collect whatever data they decide right so it's acquainting them with PAR, it's presenting different options of data collection, and it's them deciding what makes most sense here, right? In terms of what data to collect, to, to get people's information and to collect the data. So it's-, it's I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. No, awesome. Go sorry. ahead, finish go up ahead. please. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was it? Okay, for the moment, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Moisten. <laughs> I just wanted to check be on a few things. Um, so one is I'm assuming that you there's got to be someone with mul that speaks that's bilingual, correct, involved in that group. And then also um, with a you know language to choose. But also, I'm just are you going to advertise or out other than the website because the website typically, only, I mean, are you just using it for form? Like say, this is where you go to sign up and you'll have other kinds of outsourcing. Cause as you may know, the, typically the, the website collects, you know, the same people, which wouldn't necessarily be helpful for the information that we're looking for. Jennifer, so, you bring up a, a really important point, like who goes to that website. What we want to do is try to centralize things. Mm -hmm. And so since folks know that the CSWG has uh, information, their meetings, et cetera, on the town website, we would direct traffic basically to there. Um, just again, to, to centralize things so folks aren't looking, you know, well, the CSWG, you know, their link to need or whatever is one place. And then uh, the form that's connected to this work, connected to the CSWG is another place. So that's why we thought of that. Uh, instead of uh, putting it on our, our website, that it would be important to connect the work and these ambassadors to the CSWG. So that's, that's how we saw it. And I, I think it's a, you know, from our vantage point, uh, it's a good thing and that they understand that the work is, is emerging from this group. Um, but also, you know, you don't have to go look in, in multiple different places. I mean, basically what Katie's laying out is a, is a two week type of 
again, not training, <laughs> but um, a two week type of uh, program uh, for the, the recruiting and, um, uh, you know, getting their input and shaping these discussions within the community. Um, and, and that's how we, we have uh, kind of laid it out. Certainly we have folks that we've already also talked with in the community, but again, we want to open it up to see if some other leaders might emerge, which is you know, part of how the research takes place. But the people that you uh, seem to have already uh, spoken with, which is awesome, you could get them to um, you know, fill out the form. It also allows us to, um, you know, get a, a, a bit of background, um, talk about their interest in doing this work. Um, we have some demographic data, you know, in filling out the form. All of that's uh, kind of key and important. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, well, I, I love the the PAR approach and. Um, I think we certainly want the information from BIPOC folks. I mean, that's, that's why all of us got on this working group to begin with. Um, and I think for our recommendation, I mean, we've pretty much decided we're gonna recommend some sort of community responder program. Um, and I think the credibility of our recommendation will be greatly enhanced if we can say we've had some outreach to folks who are homeless uh, and if possible, some outreach to folks who with mental health issues. I mean, this is what the, the literature recommends when you set up a community responder program, talk to the people who are, have interactions with the police, uh, who now we think we're gonna provide an interaction with a different group of responders. Um, so I, I don't wanna take it away from BIPOC at all, but you know, either within BIPOC or slightly broader, I think it's key that both of those groups be included in the outreach. Mm -hmm. We we talked a lot about this as we were proposing, um, and just thinking about the feasibility, right? So when I think of houseless population, I think of oh, you know, we could run focus groups or talk with people, you know, at the various resources in town, you know, Amherst Survival Center or whatnot. And then, and while we be able to, you know, identify folks, I'm, I'm almost thinking logistically, like, what would that look like in the age of the pandemic, right? Where we can't just go and sit down at a table and perhaps converse yeah. like we would without, and um, perhaps many of, of, you know, people in the houseless category don't have the technology to do a Zoom meeting. Um, you know, so this, uh, this requires a lot of thought and strategy. And I think what we decided as a group, and again, I'll ask my, my colleagues to chime in, but what we decided is given the time constraint, and again, when we think of um, population with mental health issues, the needed trust and relationships to be able to dive into something of such a, you know, to, of such a, a topic that could put people in a very vulnerable place. Um, it felt like it was too forced for the time frame that we had, and it was outside the nature of our approach, participatory action research. Um, so that's where we did narrow our scope, simply because, again, we hold the process and we hold the people, the ambassadors in this case, you know, to, we want to honor their, um, and respect, you know, what they bring. So if I could chime in, even within a timeline of Feb, uh, February 24th or whenever the, uh, sorry, uh, whenever the original, um, timeline was set up, working with folks, um, and, and getting a group who might have, uh, you know, mental challenges, that type of thing. And again, establishing trust, right? In order to have those discussions, 
we really try to uh, lay it out and, and each time it came up problematic, particularly in the time of COVID. Um, I, like I said, I had a conversation with Kevin Noonan of Craig's Doors and uh, just in terms of resources and how that might even look for a discussion. And he said in their new facility, which is um, they, they're housed in a hotel, um, they did at one time have like a bank of computers, but once uh, Craig's doors moved, their staff had to actually co-op the, the computers in order to uh, work. So um, <clears throat> they don't have resources in order to, to have that conversation virtually. And um, there's not necessarily a, a central location for them to gather to have a discussion. Um, so it would have to be very individualized. So, I mean, some of the solutions to that might be to send uh, the survey and, and have a, a means in which we could, you know, um, particularly me, um, I have, uh, I'm only sharing this because that's, I, I've been vaccinated because of um, uh, an uh, arrhythmia issue I have. So uh, I got, uh, you know, on the list with my mom, <laughs> uh, benefit of, of having this issue. At any rate, um, I certainly would be willing to go and set up a computer and uh, sit with some of these folks and uh, do a survey instrument with them. Um, it's not pure par, uh, you know, it's not ideal right. because I'm not part of their affinity group, but at least we would be able to get some data. So that would be an extra, um, you know, and, and perhaps worthwhile. Um, a survey instrument's not going to give you the same uh, rich qualitative experiences that um, having a discussion would. And I, I think we need to keep that in mind. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Mm -hmm. Ms. Moyston. Um, and so I'm assuming that you have dedicated five ambassadors for your own particular reason, uh, but I just didn't know like, if one of those was someone from the homeless population. One of the ambassadors were from, does that not work? I'm. No, that's what I'm trying to share with you in, in okay, researching sorry. and researching that as a possibility, um, you know, so you have an ambassador and where did they go to have that discussion? It can't necessarily take place virtually, right? Because people would have to have those resources um, or those resources would have to be set up, right? In either their own location where they, where they are, where that would be, I don't know if you're in a shelter um, for Craig's doors, from what I'm understanding, they're in um, a hotel, so different hotel rooms. So right. logistically, how would you do it? And that's what I'm proposing, that at least to get some data, right? We don't have an ambassador because we're, what, how would the ambassador outreach to that community in some comprehensive way, right, becomes the question. Um, and I'm, I'm still discussing it with Kevin Noonan to, you know, to, to try to figure out possibilities, but this is the conversation that I've been in with him. And so we talked about possibly setting up a computer to, to have um, a survey on the computer where individuals might be able to, um, to input information. Again, it's not within the PAR research model, and it doesn't give you that rich uh, contextual uh, experiential information that would be most helpful here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm um, talking about time frames. I'm, I'm looking at, at, at our clocks a little after seven. We try to end at 7.30. And I know one of our members uh, certainly has to leave at, at 7.30 on, on the dot. So I wanna, I wanna come back a little bit to, to the point where we talked about um, having something 
to us by Friday. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanna... want to say Ms. Ferreira has her hand up as well too. Okay. I didn't... Before you started all um, okay. speaking. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Ferreira. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well. To see some things. The ambassadors. Um, obviously, there's intersectionalities, though. Can you all hear me? Because yes. I know. Yes. Yeah, there's intersectionality. So I'm saying when you're going out there and talking with people from groups, uh, um, you know, you're going to get people that are bilingual that obviously have had issues with drug and alcohol, whole, uh, houselessness, or mental health. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if we need to have like a ambassador for, you know, homelessness or a ambassador for drug and You know what I'm saying? I mean, it has to be just, you know, finding those folks that, you know, have that, that connection into the community that then, you know, know of these stories and things like that to be able to bring the, the folks in. So these are all the areas, obviously, that we're interested in finding out information. And I'm sure you all know this, but that's the way I kind of think about, about it in my mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Deborah, and that's that's what we have had that discussion, and we're depending on that intersectionality to inform this project. So, absolutely, that that's what we want. That's going to be rich, important data. Um, we're all intersectional, and so um, the discussions and the survey uh, instrument would pick up on that demographic data most definitely. And. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank Go you. Ahead. I was just going to say, and and while a particular ambassador might might not have the the identity you're looking for, it's not to say that other people within that ambassador's group can't speak to that identity, if you will, right? Because again, five ambassadors, they're all going to work with. I forget the exact number we proposed, but you know, seven seven to to ten or so people in each group, right? So collectively we're gonna have input from ideally 50 people. It's not just the five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I think would be helpful, you know, I hear you saying the, the houseless population, those with mental health issues. Um, so I, I am committed to do as much as I can in terms of getting some experiences um, from the, the houseless population. Uh, working with uh, specifically Craig's doors, but it might be more uh, survey and anecdotal as opposed to the same type of data we would get from right. our research. So, you know, just to keep that in mind, I think uh, mental health communities are much trickier, you know, and I, I go back to Deborah's point of the intersectionality. We may indeed find uh, amongst all of these populations, amongst all of these affinity groups, that there's something uh, uh, intersectional in terms of mental health challenges that, that people bear. Um, and uh, due to those uh, challenges may have experienced whether positively or adversely uh, interactions with APD. So, um, you know, I, I'm not doubting that we'll get some of that information, but to go to them as a group, I, I think is a, a bit more delicate and we need to be very uh, sensitive to, um, to rushing in to those types of discussions and conversations, even with um, someone we might deem as an ambassador for that group. I think, that, thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Oh, I Terry think that, has their hand up, by the way. Who does? Terry. Mullen. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, and I just went wanted down. to I add... saw it go up, then it went down. I said, oh, he didn't. <laughs> ask. Uh, I just wanted to add also that um, the public APD data also has some tangential uh, information on, on APD calls to Craig's store specifically. That's like a a, a geotag that the APD does have. So we do have some Amherst specific data. Now, again, this is quantitative data. We won't get the richness, um, right. but I just, we also have access to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, we, we got asked specifically whether we wanted uh, our consultants to facilitate communication between our group and the APD. So that was a questionable thing in there. Um, I would propose that we do not 
look to you to facilitate communication between the APD and our working group. Um, but we do, you know, it does call for you to analyze uh, data, including data from the APD. And we hope that you will take all the data we've gotten from them. Uh, and if necessary or appropriate, go back to them uh, that you don't have to go through us. Um, you're working for us. You can go back to the APD and ask for more details or anything. And I'm, if you know if it's data that they have, and I think the town manager would also support those kinds of requests. Um, so, but as I mean, it's up to the group. But I don't see you facilitating our conversation. But I'd like you to have full access to them and whatever data uh, we can get from them for you, uh, and for you to think about what's what's needed from them. And and to that point, too, um, to Mr. Vernon Jones's point, we. Uh, before this conversation, and certainly a couple of weeks ago, at least, we've been, um, you know, planning to meet with uh, the chief of police of Amherst, and um, that that's actually in the works. I, I know um, uh, uh, Chief Livingstone is willing and able to meet with us. We just need to uh, put some things together to make that happen, have a conversation with him, because we have asked a number of questions of the police department. And there are some data points that we have already from them. And there's certainly some, some gaps, some of the things that they are not keeping record of uh, because they don't have the capacity to do so. Some that they're just not collecting it because they're not thinking about collecting it until recently. A lot of new questions are coming up. So a lot of new data points are, are needed. So, um, and just and coming back behind what Mr. Vernon Jones said, you know, we can have that conversation. That's going to generate some additional information on top of what we have. I want to go back to the, the, the contract. It does say that um, you'll be, you know, uh, analyzing and researching, analyzing all the stuff that you do, not that we do necessarily. So perhaps we can, <laughs> um, you know, th there's, there's some mix there. You know, it, it specifically said, um, let's see if I can get it then, that the, um, uh, yeah, the contracts will analyze all results and, and data received as a result of, of the participatory action, research methods, and public outreach. So that's the kind of stuff you're talking about. So it is expected that you would analyze and, and, and that. However, there's other information that informs that. So we're hoping that, that to be able to incorporate that in, in, your, in your work as well. We, of, of course, and, and again, we're, we're not working in a, in a vacuum, but I think it's, it's uh, important to keep in mind, prioritize what you want us to go out there and do, right? Because this is something that obviously, you know, uh, you need some expertise in, but also those of you who are, you know, who are qualified to do this work, you're doing the work of the CSWG. So you can't do both. So that's what we've been, you know, uh, hired to do. So we're going to go out right. and do that. We'll analyze it, put it into a report, and there has to be a balance with what is already there. And I, I think you've done a great job in already collecting, uh, particularly some qualitative data. The survey was a good addition. Um, but, you know, now we have to go out and do that, our research project, right, that we've been tasked with. And I think, again, prioritizing you going through the contract as well and prioritizing, this is definitely, you know, the top one that we want you to do. This is the next one. This is the next one. That will help us also give attention and as I think it was uh, Alicia that had said and, and be able to, to plan as well. So um, if, if we could do that together and, and shape it, I think it'll be much more useful to you and, and to the town and um, it, we'll be able to get it done within uh, the timelines in particular. Sanji, um, um, yeah. And I just <laughs> want to make sure Sanji gets it. Yeah, I just saw it come up on the screen. Yeah. 
No, I just, um, this may have been said before, uh, just forgive me if I am Johnny come lately, but I wanted to know how deep the commitment of the working group, how, how, how committed are you to actually um, uh, putting into action the, 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 the findings and the recommendations of the consulting group? I mean, you know, because these things are not easy, we know. Uh, these are not easy issues that we are uh, confronting. And once the work is done, um, what can the, 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 the community expect uh, in terms of results, in terms of action? Well, just, just to begin, I, I think the, the group as a whole came into this with a very serious commitment on our part to uh, begin to work in a direction that looks at um, and makes recommendations about policies and procedures and practices within the Amherst Police Department. Um, we do have a charge and um, that, that it's a very serious one. And what we're, we're, we're charged with is coming up with recommendations and not just recommendations that are airy and, and sound kind of nice and whatever, but recommendations that are actionable, that, that they're doable, and they, they make sense and respond to this community. You know, we're, we're not necessarily, there's a lot of history around policing that we all know. And, uh, but, you know, for example, we're not Eugene, Oregon, but we are Amherst. And there are some structural issues around policing that we all are aware of that, that need to be changed in many cases, modified at the least. So we're, we're about that for, for sure. And I think we, what we want to do is uh, be able to make some recommendations to the town on, on how to proceed. And they have to, those recommendations have to have integrity and they have to have meaning and they have to respond and be, respond to what, what you're finding, what you're gonna find, what we found already. But certainly it has to be something that the community is gonna say, hmm, this, this, is, this is on point. They heard us, we, we want this, they made the recommendations and you know, then the town responds. So that's my take, and I don't know if any other uh, uh, working group members want to respond as well, but that's that's our commitment. Thomas Pat. Um, first of all, I, I'm not responding to what Dr. Sanjay said. I just want to, I wanted to wait until almost the end of the meeting. Um, obviously, time has always been an issue when this group was formed. And you know we are restricted by fiscal year. And as I listen to all of you tonight, everybody is making sense. And from my perspective, I would say, you know, to let the town council know, you know, for several generations to do their work very well, we should let them do their job very well, and then have the town manager and the, and the town council and say you know, set aside certain amount of money for this budget year. And then when the group finish their, their work, then we can allot that money to their findings. Instead of us like having the seventh generation, you know, rush through this project. I'm, I'm just feeling that it's not very realistic. We're doing this because the town council wants something for this current fiscal year. Why don't we ask them to set aside some money for this year? We're still working on our recommendation so that we do this very well. I don't think we'll buy into the community that we hired a, a consulting firm in six weeks, they got everything done. That's impossible. Who are we kidding? And we're in earnest. And I didn't want to say this at the beginning, but I don't hold back. I just want to say my piece. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Walker. And then um, Ms. Pereira. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things because I also have um, a firm 730 deadline. I apologize. Um, so I wanted to respond to Mr. Vernon Jones' proposal um, that if we were to keep the current 
um, bid contract, I would be comfortable with just completely taking that request out of it uh, because I don't think it's necessary to have the consulting group facilitate our interactions with the APD as this is something we've already long been in conversation about as a group. Um, and I think we're fully capable of taking that on. Um, I though now have an interesting new perspective since Ms. Pat just spoke. And I, before I raised my hand, wasn't thinking about that, but I actually think that is a great idea to consider. Um, and that I know we're all really anxious to get these recommendations into the town and to make some big changes and for these things to be implemented and for things to start running, but also really concerned about um, efficiency and the product of our work and having it be meaningful and have it be like serve its purpose. And so it may be in our best interest to consider or look more into just asking them to set aside more money for us to continue this work so that we can have better results. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, Ms. Ferreira, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, um, yeah, I have the, you know, the 7.30. So one of the things that I do want us to quickly discuss before the 7.30 mark, or maybe you send me an email, is whether we are gonna be meeting with the police chief next week, because I think we need some prep for that, if that's the case. Um, so I just wanna put that out there. But in terms of what we're discussing, I mean, definitely, I mean, I, I would love to have more money and I guess we should ask the town council for more money and you know, talk to Mr. Bachman about that. However, I do not want to lose the momentum, though. I think we've talked about this before, right? The fact that, you know, the budget, the, the budget cycle is coming up, this fiscal year is coming up. And I think the community is expecting us to do something. You know, we can get the ball moving. We don't have, we already been talking about this for a couple of months. We already have some ideas in terms of some alternative recommendations. Now, can we add to that? Can we add more? Yes, for other fiscal years, yes, we can. But I think, you know, this is my opinion, obviously, is, is that we, we and both, not, you know, one or the other exclusive, and both. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones? No, I'm just here. watching the clock wind down here. Uh, no. Do you intend to ask us to do something with the yeah. list of proposals you had me send to everybody via... Ms. Moyston. That's to me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do. I, I, I didn't anticipate necessarily that we would be having this full meeting this evening um, based on how uh, information that was shared, but I'm glad we've had it uh, still. We, um, yes, I, I would. In fact, um, for those, uh, our, our working group, we received a uh, a document in the um, in the packet, um, which I asked um, Dr. Uh, Vernon Jones to, to to send forward to everybody to, to take a look at, not necessarily to fill out. But we were going to have a discussion about that. What I'd like to do, and I don't know if this fits into what you you may have been thinking when you put this together, but could we take that as as a homework assignment, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, and actually go through the chart and um, you know check each item individually as a working group member to get some feedback that we could collate for our next meeting. I think it would be useful to do that as long as we have an understanding that we're not making decisions by filling out a checklist separately. We're simply sort of giving some indication of which way we're leaning on things uh, and that we will have time to talk about them together. That's, that I was my understanding. It would be great if we had all that data before our next meeting. That was my understanding. And I, I think it was specifically, you said in there that this was a, a tool for discussion. Certainly it was not a, it was not a decision-making tool. It was a school for a tool for some conversation to have, yeah. which feeds into where, and I think I mentioned this before, this, and this comment is to the uh, consultants. We have been straw polling ourselves to see where we're funneling down to um, in terms of what we want to see happen already, because we do know some things, and some of these things are pretty straightforward that we need that need to have happen. So this is just another way to to collate that information. So I would like to recommend to the the group that we uh, 
take that form, uh, that grid that was sent forward uh, by Mr. Vernon Jones, have us work on that with the understanding that we come prepared to discuss it at the next meeting. Uh, again, with the idea of moving our recommendations and thoughts forward in the process. So if that makes sense and that reflects what the intent of this is, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, I'd like to go forward and recommend that as a piece of our next meeting. I, I love the idea of homework. It'd be used if people could do it and send it, I don't know, to one of us or to Ms. Moyston. Uh, so we had a collated summary to begin our discussions. I, I think we would increase our efficiency in our next meeting. Well, that, that was actually gonna be the next thing because I had a, a note here about the timing of feedback. Um, it would be something that we would wanna uh, feed to Ms. Moyston, I would believe, and also be able to have it collated. And it, that could go to you know, Ms. Moyston uh, and possibly you, Mr. Vernon Jones. I don't know if you have availability to do yeah, that, sure. but the, the, the two of you could begin that. And if we need to, as a group, decide on, or you need to help us understand when you need it in order to collate it in a way to get it on our agenda next year, next, um, you know, next week. So that, that's the quick, I mean, Monday's our agenda, but maybe Friday. Oh, I, I'll make it happen if I've got everything by Monday morning. Okay. Let, let's, let's agree then to do that. Um, unless there's other comments about this particular grid that we're working on. Okay, let's let's agree to do that, um, and uh, we'll take a look at that grid that's in your packet, um, and get that to, to Ms. Moyston and uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Moyston, and then I'll go to Ms. Walker. And then Ms. Owen. Um, yeah. um, so I, the grid itself and the results of that don't have to be in by Monday. I just need to know to put that piece back onto the agenda. Does that make sense? It does, and I, right. and I, but I think we have to have it available in some fashion to, you know, that crafts our discussion, if you will. Yeah. Um, Ms. Owen, and then Ms. 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 Pat. Um, I think Ms. Walker was first. Was what had it? Okay, sorry to tell Ms. Walker. Yeah, because you have to go as well. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's okay, thank you. Um, I was just wondering though if we could uh, circle back really quickly to the consulting group. They said that they have some suggested edits for the bid contract that they're going to submit to us by Friday. Um, and then we briefly discussed maybe having people come together to get responses to them. And so just in light of being mindful of our timeline, and I don't think we're talking about putting that on the agenda to go over next week as a full group, um, all of their suggestions that maybe we have a subcommittee that can meet and go over that and get an answer to them more quickly um, so that they can start their work and they're not waiting for us to answer them. Okay, let me just hold, hold that. That's a, that takes a, a little different direction, if you will. And I, who was next, Ms. Pat? She just said what I, I was about to, oh, Marcel, to I can't remember now which one was, a whole lot of hands went up there at once. Um, my question was just circling back to what Ms. Ferreira had brought up earlier. Yeah. Um, next meeting, are we also meeting with the APD? And should we have, I know at some point we had a subcommittee to go over the police data. Um, when are we going to meet with the APD? And should we prepare questions or? Well, we haven't decided on a, a meeting yet with them, we, you know, because we haven't had this meeting. We were putting, we, we could have met with the APD this week, but we were anticipating a meeting with our consultant group, which was taking a priority. We could we could move that to um, you know, the following week. We could move that to the 17th. I don't think um, uh, you know, uh, Chief Livingstone needs tons of advance notice. He does know, but we have to get him some information that, so he can properly prepare. And you know, if we were to do that and do what we're talking about in terms of the, the, the grid information that Mr. Vernon Jones put forward, that's two things right there. And we still haven't gotten back to the, the top of our agenda about what is needed, you know, for the, the consultant group for, you know, what do they need by Friday to do what they need to do. And Ms. Ferreira has her hand up. Yes, Ms. Ferreira. I thought I was before her. Oh, you oh, were? I'm sorry, Ms. Pratt. Oh, I was before her. Can I, you okay. were, you were, you were. Go right ahead. <laughs> so I'm not sure I, I bought into the great thing that we're supposed, because everybody already submitted um, alternative um, public safety. Why do we need to work on that again? 
I think we should leave it the way it is. We shouldn't prioritize anything. Whatever people submitted, we, you know, should go. So I don't think we need more time to work on that. That's just my own opinion. I'm not understanding the, the point. I, I think if I'm- For example, afraid. for me, for example, for me, when I did uh, my, my own recommendation, mm -hmm. I actually reached out to my network, to people. What would they like to see change in Amherst? And then for us to come back and said, we're going to prioritize stuff. I don't want anything taken out from whoever contributed um, the yeah. recommendation. I think everything should stand the way it is. I don't see, I mean, we don't have enough time. Why do we need time to discuss what we've already done? It's a waste of time. That's just well, my opinion. My, 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 my only take on that, I think, was that that grid was a, just a, a, a way to summarize what were, were several narrative things that were sent as a way to just to put it in some some brackets for discussion purposes. That's all. It, it was not taking away from anything that, you know, those documents that were submitted by you and, um, you know, Mr. Cage and other folks, it's not meant to you know take that away, but to be able to push it to a, a, a place where we can collate it for our own discussion. That, that was my understanding. I mean, we're talking, we don't have enough time and we've already done that work. Why don't we do other stuff if we don't have enough time to do other stuff? I mean, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not, not disputing that at all. I mean, I was just, you know, that was the intent of it. And perhaps that's, that's, that's correct. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I tend to disagree a bit with that. I think we do need to look at that more, though, uh, Ms. Pat, because there, when I looked at that grid, there's, there's a lot of questions that I have on there, especially around the community responder um, um, portion of it. So, you know, because I have a lot of different ideas around it. So we do need to look at that because we need to be on the same page if we're going to be making some recommendations, maybe in terms of what you put on, maybe not. You know, we can keep those as are, no changes. But in terms of community responder, I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of suggestions. So, um, okay, um, Dr. Shabbat. Yeah, I, I simply uh, wanna say that we would, um, you know, once you all have that together, we would love to look at that information and include it within the qualitative information. But, um, for right now, if there's no other questions for us, um, I know um, a couple of us have um, also hard deadlines of 7.30. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would, like I said, I'll get the document to you all. And it would be great as Alicia suggested, maybe a subcommittee for us to uh, direct our questions to and discuss this, but pertaining to the contract. Yeah. But of I just, course. if there's nothing more, I guess I just didn't want our, our group, the folks who need to, to head out, that they should do so. I, I think our getting to our specifics, you know, where we need to be, you know, on, on your behalf is something that we probably could consider doing as a subcommittee rather than the whole group, certainly. But um, I don't think we have anything else right now, unless there are, I, I'm, not seeing a hand. I did see Ms. Moist, and maybe you want to comment, Ms. Moist. Uh, well, I just wanted to, before they left, confirm what was happening on Friday that we were going to get the document. I just need it for the notes so yes. that I can um, have it in there correctly, and then yes. our follow up can happen after. Mm -hmm. Thank you, but thank you for coming, though, all of you. Thank yes. you so much. Thank we you. appreciate thank it. You. Well, thank you. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank each you. and every one of you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Well done. So, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Walker, you both have to leave. Um, we're, we're running over time again. If I only well, take, take your one, comments very quickly, Ms. Ferreira, then Ms. Walker. Yeah, one thing. I, I don't think we should meet with the APD next week. I think next week we need to prep to meet with the APD. You see what I'm saying? So I think I would like the APD prep to be on there as an agenda item and as well as that um, grid, you know, um, to be on there. In terms of the consultants, yeah, I think it just needs to be a subcommittee to kind of, you know, once they submit whatever their questions are, a submit committee can work with, um, you know, Mr. Bachelman and Mr. Delaney to just respond to their, to their, you know, questions. And with that, I'm heading out and you all can um, 
email me. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Good evening. Ms. Yeah, Walker. let me know when things are due. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Ms. Bye. Walker. Um, so thank you. I also have to go, but I just wanted to propose that I thought, um, I don't mean to volunteer anybody for this, but I thought that Mr. Vernon Jones and Mrs. Pat, that we could just reconvene as the subcommittee that did the bid initially. Um, and I would be available to meet Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, and that we could just go over their suggested revisions then. I was thinking the same thing too. I had written the same thing right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> Literally, I said, why recreate the, uh, the wheel? It's already rolling. Um, but uh, let me, while you're, while you're all on screen, is any, any objection, there, any question, any concern about that from the, the three of you? Only that I assume some of the things are up to us and some are up to business procedures of right, yeah. and the legal responsibilities of the town. So I Mr. Brock, Mr. Yeah, let me just, I mean, don't want to leave that necessarily hanging there, but just for a moment there, Mr. Bachman. Yeah, very quickly. So yeah, we are constrained because of the infant, with right. the bid that we put out, we have to stay within those constraints. And that's why Anthony will work with that. But uh, there were, I think they had some legitimate questions for you to answer. And I think the the one thing, as I mentioned, want to make sure that we have some payment dates tied to product or whatever it is that you want to have as your thing that, that the community, that they're serving you and your needs, so. If I could add one more thing, yeah, please, just, Mr. Um, you can also ask APD to come in and then go and then they can come back another time if you want them to. So you don't, it's not just a one shot with APD. If you want them to come in and make a presentation or something and then say, okay, now we, we come back in three weeks, you, that's an option for you as well. Well, in terms of the, that item you just mentioned about the police, um, um, I'd, I'd like to maybe work on a, a proposal of how to approach the police in terms of this discussion, that we're gonna have a conversation with them if someone would like to work with me on that and um, get that to you to take a look at. We don't necessarily, I mean, I, I would, and I'm speaking because this was told to me, certainly, uh, Chief Livingstone is flexible about when you can meet. I just don't want us to miss an opportunity to get some information that we need going forward that would be very helpful in terms of us making recommendations. So if it, it doesn't necessarily have to happen next week, but certainly we could, I could set something forward and I welcome the, the work of somebody else with me to, um, to look it over, send it to the group and say, hey, here's how we can approach, it is a way to approach um, uh, Chief Livingstone and his staff. And here's what we can anticipate in terms of a conversation with him. Mr. Vernon Jones. I would recommend you ask Deborah Ferrer to work with you on that because she's been quite uh, emphatic about the point of wanting to prepare. I'll do that and I'll, I'll just initiate that from there. And going back to what Mr. Boffelman said and then circling back to you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, yeah, there are some, and Anthony, you're, you're still here. Thank you <laughs> for hanging with us. Um, there are some specific things that, that you all have to deal with. Um, we can be specific, I'm sure, to some degree, to some greater degree on what we want them to do, certainly. So perhaps the, the subcommittee, uh, we could send you off something as early as tomorrow to say, hey, here's specifically what we all think needs to happen and get that to um, get that to um, Dr. Shabazz and the group ASAP. Ms. Moishta. I, I just wanna make sure I understand what I'm doing. So Friday, they're gonna send us the Con their revisions to the contract or their questions, which will be forwarded if it's not already to Anthony, Paul, and all the CSWG members. And then the subcommittee is going to meet with them on Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. On Tuesday. And mm -hmm. do you guys have a time preference? Like, do you need me to set up a Zoom meeting or? Is Alicia still there? She is. Yes, I'm still here. Sorry, I just had to turn off my camera because I'm in motion, but I'm still listening. What time is good for you guys? Um, I, I'm available us. all day. So um, you guys just let me know. And then I have to check back with the seven gen generations to see what time is good for them. So I'm just going to send a doodle poll out for Tuesday well, based well, off of. What about Mr. Ross? Or I can meet up. Why are we meeting Tuesday rather than Monday? 
Because that's what Pat said. Oh, my, that's oh. what so Ms. Moisson is trying to figure Sorry. out. We have to post it, right? What is today? Today is Wednesday. We have to post that. Do they? There's only three of them, right? They Don't we need part. five to make a form? Need five. So you yeah. need to post it. But it's a, it's an official subcommittee, so they need to post. Mm. Okay. So if you post it tomorrow. If I post it tomorrow, it'll be fine I'm, for I'm Monday. Yeah. And Ms. Walker, Monday? Yes, I'm also available all day on Monday. So send, and Mr. Delaney? Okay, so I will send out a doodle poll for Monday. I'll be available after three on Monday. Oh, after three. I'm not available after 6.30, so. After six, oh, wow. So not available after 6.30. So maybe we're talking between 3 and 6.30. Can we have two days, Monday and Tuesday, just in case? Yeah. Oh, uh, seven gen generation. Yep. So I'm going to, I think the best thing to do is send out a doodle poll for the Monday oh. and Tuesday okay. time frame. And you'll, but you'll post meetings whether you get everything back from everybody or not. Yes, I will post a meeting. Well, I need a time. So I might, I can just assume that it would happen at three and cancel it. Yeah, because we may, even if, if they're not available, right. and we're available, we may, may need to meet to just kind of craft our response to whatever their requests are. Mm -hmm. I want to do that, Alicia. Yeah, that's okay with me. I'm really just fully available Monday and Tuesday. So whatever you guys want to do, I'll be available to do. Thank you. For the rest of us, um, we have thoughts on, if we have thoughts on that or contributions, um, we'll just send them to you, Ms. Moisten, to forward to the subcommittee. Okay. And we're going to do that. I, I would suggest for us who are not on that subcommittee to, to get those in tomorrow, Friday morning, the latest, so that we're not, they're not waiting around to hear from to the last minute from us. Well, but what we really want your input on is is your how you respond to what the seven gen people are asking. Yeah, that. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that. But that's Friday. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying in the meantime, I mean, I think there's some information we can ones. give you uh, to, to think about as you as you deliberate. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, just get it all in the hopper early. Okay. So, Mr. Delaney, are you available on what we'd say Monday at three? Yep. If yes. If that's when it is, I mean, no, I'm I'm widely available on Monday. So. Oh. We will need you <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Okay. We good for the moment. With all of that, you're okay uh, with that, Miss Moisson? We're been sufficiently cloudy or clear. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I think that's it for the moment. Um, any upcoming events? Ms. Moiston? I don't have one, but the League of Women Voters Equity Task Force is having their open forum with the different, I think they said there's six different racial equity um, grassroots organizations that will be presenting. Mm -hmm. I just happened to see it on the calendar of our yeah. website. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to um, make that known. I can send an email out tomorrow with the link information so that folks can um, join if they would like. Okay. Oh, wait, but we meet again before then, too, so it's okay. Yeah. So our next meeting will be on next Wednesday. We understand it's going to be a subcommittee meeting. We haven't figured out is it Tuesday or Monday, or we're not sure yet. It depends on this uh, seven yeah. gen. Yeah. Okay. And Hi, I'm sorry. Can I um, add an upcoming event? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so Defund 413 is hosting an active bystander Know Your Rights training um, 
one is open for the general community on Friday, and then they have one available for the BIPOC only community on Saturday. Um, and you can register for the event on their link tree. Great, thank you. Okay. I assume there are maybe no other topics that we need to discuss at this particular time. Um, that, that being the case, um, I can make a motion to adjourn. So move. Second day. Vernon Jones. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Second meeting is adjourned as of 7.47 p.m. Thank you all for all your work. Thank you. Thank you for this Thank important you. matter. Thank you. It's overwhelming tonight. It's a lot. We're good. <laughs> Thank you.